scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Now, let me just tell you one more information about mercy and then we'll pray for tonight. Has God helped you? What does it mean to show mercy? I need to define that. There are four aspects of mercy I want you to get. Number one, mercy means a compassionate treatment to someone who is in distress. Mercy, a compassionate treatment to someone who is in distress. So when you treat someone compassionately who is in distress, that is mercy. Number two, refraining from punishing an offender is called mercy are we together so number one to treat someone compassionately who is in distress mercy number two to refrain from punishing an offender that means someone who deserves to be punished when you refrain from punishing that person you have shown him mercy number three the disposition to forgive or to pity or to be kind. The disposition to forgive, to show pity or kindness is called mercy. The last is to alleviate pain and distress to provide relief. This is an expression of mercy. I'll take it again. Number one, compassionate treatment of someone in distress. Number two, to, re, to refrain from punishing an offender. That means the punishment that is due that offender. Number three, the disposition to forgive, to pity, or to be kind. And then number four, to alleviate pain and distress to provide relief. That means, look up please. Summarizing these four definitions gives us two dimensions of mercy. Number one, there is mercy that translates to pardon and forgiveness. There is mercy that translates to relieving pain and distress. Are we together now? So, mercy is not just forgiving an offender. Mercy is also providing relief for someone. So if you do not need mercy as forgiveness over something, you need mercy as a relief for pain or something you're going through. This is very powerful. Please look up. When I caught the revelation of the mercy of God, my life changed. The mercy of God, I will repeat, like I gave in the example to the door, the mercy of God is not supposed to replace your responsibility of knowing God and walking in keeping with his principles. Like you would always hear me teach, the mercy of God is a system of advantage that was provided that in addition to your obeying all these principles, because the best of your strength will still be limited. There will still be gaps somewhere. The mercy of God. Now listen, the mercy of God 
is only administered at the instance of brokenness. I will just say that quickly. As powerful as God's mercy is, not everyone can become a recipient of his mercy. There is a condition. There is a condition that until you satisfy, the mercy of God cannot speak for you. That condition is called brokenness. That means every time you see someone who is a rich recipient of God's mercy, he has satisfied that necessary and sufficient condition of brokenness. What is brokenness? An acknowledgement of your inadequacy. An acknowledgement of the fact that you are limited and unassisted by God. You cannot meet God's standard. Brokenness. So it is possible that many of us desire the help of God tonight. You came for this conference to obtain help and God wants to release this expression of his help as his mercy. But the help of God as his mercy will come to you and not be able to rest on you because it does not find brokenness. Someone say brokenness. Please shout it again, brokenness. This is very important. All through scripture, everywhere you see God communicating mercy, when David killed Uriah, remember the story with Uriah and Bathsheba? That was what birthed Psalm 51. It was David reporting himself to God and he cried, he said, in iniquity did my mother conceive me. That state of brokenness was what earned him the title of being called a man after God's heart. Not even Moses, the meekest man on earth, had that title of a man after God's heart. Are we together? When you read the story of the prodigal son, the story of the prodigal son is a classic rendition of the ministry of mercy. The Bible talks about a young man who was a younger brother and he wanted his share of possession and the Bible says he left and lived riotously. And then the Bible says when everything had depleted, he was in that state feeding with swine. And he said unto himself, he said, how many hired servants does my father have? And I am here feeding with the swine. Hear what he said. I will arise. Say brokenness. I will arise and I will go to my father, he said. And when I meet him, I will not just say, father, I am your son. Listen, I just did whatever with my money, but now I'm back. Better accept me. I didn't ask myself to be here. That is pride and not brokenness. Now, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ in teaching believers to be confident we have shifted it overboard and it has graduated into pride there is a healthy line between confidence to approach him boldly and the spirit of reverence most people have gone overboard and they believe that God is just some senior brother somewhere who you can stand by the blood of Jesus and in the name of Jesus and he must cough out everything you need no, this God who calls himself your father is also God. Never forget. Brokenness. Father, I admit that by my strength and my wisdom, I cannot build this ministry. It is true I went for Bible training. It is true that I fast and pray. And I will continue because your word provides those as the template for an excelling life. I do that one because I love you. But I do that to honor the law of obedience. However, I know it is not within me to provide the kind of life I desire. Therefore, I come before you. You are the all-wise God. And God says, who is this speaking a language of brokenness? And quickly you will find the help of God. There are people who pray and based on the rules of prayer, their prayer should not be answered. There are many things based on the theology of prayer. And yet, because in the midst of all the confusion, their hearts are sincere. They can cry. They don't even know who to pray for. Is it pray to? Is it the Father? Is it the Son? Is it the Holy Spirit? Is it an angel? They can just cry and say, Lord, if you are there, please help me. And suddenly God comes. Can I tell you, every time God finds brokenness, you are ready to entertain his presence. He will come. Many men of God depend on power, depend on grace, depend on intellect, 
That's why we don't have a lot of results. Listen, the person talking to you is not in ignorance. By the grace and the privilege of God, you've heard me say it. I will simply say I have obtained mercy from God. God has taken the lifetime of many people and given it to me. I know what it means to be a recipient of God's mercy. God is giving you explanation right now. It is not that Enugu cannot favor you. It is not that your spiritual life cannot rise. It is not that you cannot enter the realm of visions and dreams and prophetic encounters. It does not take God anything to give your ministry global visibility. It does not take God anything. Do you know, let me tell you, one of the ways that you really know that people have been helped by God is when you come close to them, you become disappointed because you will look for that wow factor and you will not really find it. So what exactly about you is really responsible for the results? And the people will tell you, this is me. This is all of me you are seeing. Years ago, when we used to travel, when I travel with the protocol, but I, it's not now that I dress wearing all this. I used to wear a jean and my polo and my earpiece my palm sandals so that my leg does not swell and when we travel for meetings sometimes the protocol people can be waiting sometimes even waiting you know at the base for hours waiting for this apostle joshua selman and as soon as we come out from the airplane they are looking for him they can go to my protocol because they seem to be more dressed and they find out he's not the one and then they see this guy on jean polo my small phone, I didn't even used to use all these gadgets. I used to use my small E72 uh, or so. And sometimes I watch the shock on their faces, including the host. We prayed, we fasted, and all those who recommended me in the church will stand guilty. We, 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 it's not our fault. But at the end of the same meeting, you will know the difference between the vessel and the treasure. You see that? We make our boast in the Lord because we know that outside of him, we, we are not very much. Let me tell you the truth. It's not some condemnation. It's the truth. Whether you live in denial, one day life will force you to agree on this thing I'm saying. Outside of God, add us up. We don't amount to so much. The weight factor in us is his glory and his grace. This is why when we stand before the world, we point them to Jesus, the one who has helped us and shown us mercy. That is why we carry the cross and we stand proudly behind it. And when people look at us as though we are some superstars, on one hand, we appreciate the sincerity of your commendation, but we are quick to let them know that, listen to me, if it is this man just by intellect, and human connection and utterance and whatever it is we don't add too much but because he has come to us and let me tell you sincerely what he found that brought him was brokenness for someone this is your message this night you are too proud to receive help from God you are still leaning and trusting on everything after all I was in someone else's business and when I was helping him as an apprentice I made him a billionaire. Now that I have my own business, I should be a billionaire. And you are still scrounging around because it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of the Lord that showeth mercy. 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 Someone can be so competent and excellent and yet his destiny helpers are never around. And then the day he's not around, the weak alternative to him just comes around. And that day, that is the day that the person who needs the contract wants to give out a contract of over one billion. The person who they would have given is not around. And since you are there, they say, can you do it? And they give you. And by the time people are saying, what did you do? Sometimes you stand and you say, listen, even that contract, it was not me who did it. It was too big. I had to call someone to come and do it. And yet, the credit comes to you and you are so blessed. Listen, what I'm teaching you is so powerful. Ladies and gentlemen, if you understand what it is I'm teaching you, your life will remain an unending wonder. 
I stand before God every time when I'm alone, especially when I return from meetings like this. Mighty, marvelous miracles, transformations by the Spirit of God. And you know, my phone is full of text messages, people saying all kinds of things, apostle, you are this and that, and I know they are sincere. There is a place for honor. But then I stand and I look at this gentleman and I say, young man, listen carefully. There are no self-made people in this kingdom. When they look at you, what they see is the mercy of God. It's just that they do not know that it is called the mercy of God. So they call it any other thing. But I'm telling you the name now. Are we together? Any man across the globe who is doing mighty things for the kingdom in ministry, in business, if it is the God of the Bible who helped them, the first expression of the help they received was mercy. Mercy. When the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me, I was not fasting. I was not praying. I fast. I pray. But at that point, I, was, I didn't even ask him to come. I was lying down and he came. How do you explain that? Whereas there are other people saying, God, I will kill myself if you don't come. He still did not come. Are we together? And he comes to you. It was an honor already for me to see him. And then he stretches his hands towards me and blesses me and does all the things that happen. And look at my life today. Who is like him? Lion and the lamb seated on the throne. Don't sing, just listen to me. Who is like you? The lion and the lamb seated on the throne. I will praise Adonai from the rising of the sun to the end of every day. Praise Adonai. All the nations of the earth, all the elders and the saints, sing praise. For someone, at the end of this service, by tomorrow morning, you will return back and stand and say, it's a lie. What happened? I have heard that God lifts, but now I am the life that he has lifted. I have heard that God anoints. You're a man of God here. That by the next meeting you go to, you will it will it will be as if you held a charm. The grace of God and the investment of his power upon your life. Listen, I will give up anything in this life to remain in the mercy of God. I don't trust myself outside of the mercy of God. I don't even know what my tendencies are outside the mercy of God. My safety zone is the mercy of God. If you ever ask me, what is the secret behind your life, apostle? I will tell you, an ordinary man helped by God. It's not a cliche. It is, it is the definition of my life helped by God we're going to find somewhere to pray come again my friend this is your life we're going to act that example again you need to rise in ministry you need greater grace you come from a family where your grandfather already killed a lot of people and based on the cause that was released legitimately, you have come as the offspring. Uh, it's none of my business. That's not the business of the realm of the spirit too. It's a law. When they were dying, they made pronouncements and said, none of your daughters will see joy because you took away my own joy. Now you have shown, you came, you showed up from that family. And you just laugh and say everything is all right, it's gone. And you are seeing the mark following you. I'm running 
I'm running, I'm running to the mercy. I'm running, I'm running, I'm running to the mercy seat. Listen. For as long as you are still complaining and giving excuses, it's unfair. I'm a beautiful lady. People are not seeing me. Find out what is covering your eyes. It will take mercy, not complaining. I'm a graduate. I even have PhD. And you will see someone who said, I was at the gate with ordinary school certificate. And someone said, I like your face. What do you do? Say, sir, don't harass me. Say, I'm leaving Nigeria. Can you be the African representative of my company? How do you explain that? Someone shout mercy. And you could shout mercy. So that when other people are saying my skill brought me here, when other people are saying my father's connection brought me here, it now gets to your turn and say, why are you here among the great? How did you get here? Because by your background, you should not be here. How did you get here? Everything you are doing, somebody is doing too. Yet they are not getting your results. The, the factor is mercy. Shout mercy. Man of God, shout mercy. Businessman, shout mercy. Thank you. You would think that will annoy them and they will leave the church. By next week, they, they are back again. I will tell you what he is doing behind the scene that you are not seeing. When he goes back home, happy you see we declare your majesty happy you see we declare your majesty happy you see your majesty your majesty and that person will kneel before God and say, Father, I didn't have the privilege to go to school. It's not laziness. I am improving myself now. You simply sent me to bring life and bring transformation. And you promised me you will go with me. Are you John so, 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 and so? Yes. The Lord said somewhere in Enugu state here that you are going to build him a church. See, are you not surprised that it's ordinary people who are making things happen? Is that not a message enough for you? I don't downplay competence. Let me repeat it again. I don't downplay adherence to principles. There are principles in life. I am a teacher of the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom. But let me tell you sincerely, when all is said and done, this is it. You have tried your best. Here he comes. No, it's only because you were lucky. It's the cloth you wore, that's why you could lift it. Next week, you are still lifting it again. After 10 years, you are still lifting it again. Because the helper remains with you. I know after 5 years, you will not last. Oh dear, what a joke. Once the helper is with you, you will keep rising. They were just lucky to be blessed. I'm sure that that, that, that car, it will not last. Another one will not come. But the helper comes again. I'm sure that ministry is just because the church is around his village people. No, sir. The only explanation to the mysterious continuity of great men is the help of God that has come as mercy. Listen, we're wrapping up. I wish I had the time to share my testimonies and tell you my stories. You will think I'm lying and you will think I'm exaggerating. And sometimes because sadly the body of Christ can misunderstand when you say some of these things. They take it for pride. But I live perpetually in awe of what the mercy of God can do. Believe me when I tell you if you ever looking for one person who is a recipient of God's mercy, it is this man standing before you. 
I have seen God do things in my life that you can almost tap yourself and say, wake up. Then said they among the hidden, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us whereof we are glad. Listen, the Lord is calling you tonight. In addition to your prayer, your fasting, your word life, your consecration, powerful kingdom principles to never compromise on. You want to soar? The energy that lifts the plane does not come from the plane. The energy that lifts the plane is already programmed in nature. So when you see the plane rising, that weight cannot rise like that. If the plane could rise on its own, it will rise like a bed without speed. It needed to tap into the law. Some of you, you have been walking, then you've tried running. You have not gotten to that speed. Let his hand lift you. And all of a sudden, you will see yourself soaring in realms. Realms and dimensions of the grace of God. You will marvel and you will wonder. You will lay up gold as dust. God will honor you and bless you. Recently, a, an international body, it's a global body. I return home and I get this letter. And they write this letter that they want to give me an award. And I'm looking at it and saying, award? How does this, in, of course, it may not be unusual that they've heard about me, but what in the world is this? An award by this body? I know the kinds of people who receive awards from that body. And I just went back, I said, God, what is this? What is this? What is this? That you can sit down in worship and in awe and God will take someone else's prayer point and bring it for you as a gift and say, take, this is it. I live a life of worship and awe because I thank God for showing me his mercy. My life would have been miserable. Every time you think we are some kind of extra, extraordinary people, on one hand, there are sacrifices that have been made. I will tell you that in truth. On one hand, he has obtained grace to walk in keeping with certain principles. But the other side of it, please don't ask me. It is the hand of God and his mercy. For me, it is not a recitation after service. Surely, goodness and mercy. These two spirits have stayed with me. I know what it means to see the goodness of God. I know what it means to see the mercy of God. My assignment tonight is to prophesy over your life. There is a dimension of mercy you must enter into this night. Yeah. Are we together? Yes. For when that happens, you will watch your life and you will know the difference. For some of you, the moment the mercy of God steps in, you will not even spend one month in this country. Believe me. All of a sudden, doors will open for you. There are pastors, listen, by the time the mercy of God rests upon your altar, people will come and meet you and say, tell the truth. I don't know you are someone who does, uh, uh, what they call it now, herbal medicine or, 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 or bury something under your, what did you do? Because I know you. And you will tell them, listen, I came from the SOAR conference. And while I was seated quietly, a man of God casually talked about this mercy factor. The mercy of God. Where do I get finance to run ministry? It is mercy. Oh. It is mercy. You can cry and call people to sow. And all the millionaires will be watching you as if they didn't hear. We are talking about the kingdom here. They say, wow. Well, Pray and they will pray. Give and they will walk away. And they will walk right to someone else and say, can I have the privilege of giving you 10, 10 million every month? Mercy. There are some of you, you already have what it takes for the world to celebrate you. In all fairness, you have worked on yourself ministerially, academically, business-wise. 
in unfairness you have worked on yourself but the mercy of God has not yet rested upon you that's why you can remain and sweep the ground and watch ordinary people as though they were holding a charm it is the mercy of God when it is time to pray I have a few more minutes with you I want you to humble yourself tonight and pray and cry for mercy and say father I know I know that without you without you I can do nothing without you there's no life to me so I need you in my life today hallelujah one day I was preparing just worshiping the Lord and resting and then I get this text that a group of some business people want to see me and they came and they said we're real estate people and we entered a covenant with God that anywhere in the world we build our estate we must build a house for you till Jesus comes I don't want to tell you how many estates they have built across the globe today and some of those houses have never gone to even go and see it there are keys to houses today that have not even gone to see myself I'm not saying this to brag are we together sometimes it's good to challenge people the product of God's mercy product of God's mercy there was a time within the period of two or three weeks God brought 18 cars what do you do with them will you put your leg in one and put your head in another one what kind of thing is that how many houses can you live in even if you travel to every nation see it is what you have that you give you can't give what there's something you are going to receive this night i'm not wasting your time please don't be distracted there is something that must come upon your life tonight because the favor of god is the child of his mercy thou shall arise and have mercy upon zion is that in your bible for the time to favor her yea the set time that mobilization was in one month no poster no nothing coming to Jesus how do you explain this I'm not saying this to brag I hope you you, you don't misunderstand it that God will grant you access to kings and nobles access to their heart and you're wondering and saying what is this I'm not saying this to waste your time. I'm saying it because it must work in your life from this night. That you will return back and as some of you on your way going home, you will start seeing a strange call. And all that you'll be hearing in your spirit is mercy. Mercy. And you pick the call and someone will say, where are you? I was in prayer and fasting and the Holy Ghost spoke to me. Are you John? Are you Ebuka? Are you this person? Please come see me in my office. Come with two or any two people you want to get a job. And they now come there and you are wondering. They just give them a job just like that. There are some of you by the mercy of God. You are going to step into prepared blessings. Dimensions of blessings that have been prepared for you. 
I'm saying this to you by the Spirit of God. Hear me. There are some of you in ministry. The level of grace and the hand of God you will begin to see in your life will surprise you. Prophetic encounters, supernatural visitations by the Spirit of God. There is no limit to what the mercy of God can do in the life of a man. Because, you know, since COVID, many people's lives, churches, ministries, families have gone down, even economically. Let me tell you the truth. It will take God's mercy to go down. When you have lost 1 billion or 100 million in your investment or in your business, what kind of technology are you going to use to gain it back? take the mercy of God I don't know how it works for others but I can tell you how it works for me grace your grace I'm nothing without you your grace please stand Your grace, your grace, have nothing without you. Your grace, your grace, Now hear me. I have 10 more minutes with us and we're done. Out of that 10 minutes, we're going to take the next two minutes. I don't know how you are going to cry before God. I'm going to leave you for the next two minutes. Lord, I acknowledge you as the only one exclusively with the power to lift me and the power to help me. And I cry like bind Bartimaeus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Someone pray. I don't know how you will cry before God, oh, but I leave you with God, your maker, for the next two minutes. And that includes those following online. God is able to help you and to raise you by his mercy. Having obtained help from God, I continue to this day. Go ahead and pray. Mercy. Mercy. Shalike parakos kadebrendege balakatosiata. You are a man of God in ministry. Cry for mercy. You are a businessman, cry for mercy. You are a prophet that wants to be used mightily by God, cry for mercy. An apostle, a teacher of the word, cry for mercy. Believe me that outside of the mercy of God, there is not much you can do. This is true. Two minutes, you are crying to your God and your maker. in store for me so I submit to your work in me till Christ be formed in me no eye has seen no ear has heard what God has prepared for me so I submit to your work in me Till Christ is formed in me. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to your work in me till Christ is formed in me. prepared for me so I submit to your work in me till Christ be formed in me till Christ
Christ be formed in me your glory revealed through me your wisdom be found in me your favor rests on me no eye has seen nor ear has heard what you have prepared for me so I submit to your work in me till Christ form in me listen to me the Bible says if my people which are called by my name in as much as they are called by my name the first thing is that they must humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways it says then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and heal their land the next time you say Lord I need your help what you are saying is keep me in the zone of your mercy mercy now you know it is not an immature spiritual prayer when you go to the place of prayer and you roll from left to right crying and say show me mercy show me mercy it was that brokenness that God found in the young boy Solomon that made him to receive such a rich investment of wisdom when Solomon was asked what do I give you he didn't just say give me an understanding heart he said Lord I am young and you have given me such a great people who is able to lead these people he confessed his ignorance and his limitation if there is something I know about God I don't know everything about God but there are a few things I know about God one of it is that the presence of God is attracted and sustained by the cry of brokenness not the accuracy in prayer not the degree of compliance to the word alone the presence of God is attracted and sustained by the voice of brokenness show me a man and a vessel that is and remains ever broken you have found a way of trapping God's presence to your domain eternally let this mind be in you the Bible says Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 which was also in Christ Jesus it says that even though he was God he did not consider it a robbery right that he had that equality yet he humbled himself he submitted himself and died even the death on the cross he says wherefore by reason of assuming that posture in the spirit and even physically God had so highly exalted him and placed him upon him an office that is greater than every other office it says that whoever invokes the authority that comes with that office you see that whether of things in heaven of things in the earth or under the earth every tongue every knee bows and every tongue confesses that Jesus is Lord even to the glory of the Father I am telling you now that in the kingdom and in the life that we live in the spirit our advantage and our edge is maintaining that posture of brokenness whether you are Jacob or Gideon or David or Solomon or even Jesus it does not matter who you are if it is the God of the Bible you want to secure his presence and his help you must perpetually remain in the place of brokenness crying for his mercy because one genuine encounter with God's mercy can rewrite your life rewrite your destiny hallelujah let me speak over your life Some of you, your spiritual fire has gone down. Some of you, your passion for spiritual things has gone down. Your prayer life is almost zero. 
nothing to write home about. You may even be a man of God. Just because you are preaching does not mean your prayer life and your word life is alive. You are the one who knows your stay with God. Some of you right now, based on the assessment of your non-compliance to kingdom principles, you do not deserve certain levels of the hand of God. But the mercy of God is about to speak for you. Can I pray for you? In the name of Jesus. We call upon the helper of men and the merciful God. May he show you mercy tonight. Mercy over your spiritual life. Mercy over your family. Mercy over your finances. Mercy over your ministry. Mercy over your health. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that by reason of the blood and that which happened in Calvary, may mercy speak for you. The same mercy speaks against every altar and every manifestation of darkness over your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I speak prophetically over your life by reason of the mercy of God rise to heights unimagined i open doors of opportunity for you by the mercy of god in the name of jesus christ hear me the one who comes to make your walk with god easy the one who comes to make your life possible in the name of jesus he who died and rose again i call for his ministry in your life in the name of jesus christ I want you to leave this place return home with this revelation protect it and guard it teach everyone you know and let them know that you have found a very powerful key so when they look at you and say man of God you are such an anointed man appreciate them sincerely but tell them hold on don't go yet let me tell you something that except for and except by the mercy of God, even in the midst of this plenty, we do not amount to much. Add it to their understanding that above and beyond the spiritual paraphernalia is the mercy of God that backs you. You're a businessman and God continues to increase and multiply you. When people come to you and say, what are you doing? Be honest with them. Show them the place of diligence. Show them the place of compliance with kingdom laws. And when you are done and they're about to go and say thank you, say, hold on, don't be in a rush, come back. There is a dimension I need to teach you. The spirit life is not complete with man's effort alone. There is the help of God that grants men the strength even to continue. You are a man of God and God is doing much through you in this city the east of the Niger and around when people applaud you receive it with joy and sincerity but please I beseech you do well to let them know truthfully so that beyond what you saw that you clapped for there is the one you have not seen and in one word it is called the help of God I am a product of the help of God you say that way your mentorship and your counsel to them will be complete. So you have left them responsible believers, understanding the precepts of the kingdom and the spirit that they should walk and live by. But then in addition, you leave them with that understanding that if your strength resides only in the consciousness of your prayer life and your word life and just your obedience and all of these things, the life of Peter in John 21 was a lesson for us. Peter was a fisherman professionally. P Peter had a boat that was working. He had a net that was working. He was by the sea where fish should be. Yet strangely, he did not catch fish. There are times that everything is right, yet you will still not have results. God does that in everybody's life once in a while so that he will remind you. There are times that God himself will stop the results from happening so that you are surprised then he says no it's not that this thing should not work 
I stopped it only to bring to your awareness that there is still another dimension the help of God because when your strength continues to lift you sometimes you can forget it's a weakness in men it has nothing to do with being good or bad it's a weakness in men I know if I go for the meeting people will be healed and blessed I know I glory be to God but you don't mean it and they laugh and say he has come again mighty man of God so there are times God will draw your ears and because we are usually very stubborn and we don't pay attention the only way he helps us to turn is to withdraw results every time God withdraw results men will turn to him and he will say it was not about the results I wanted your attention remember that I am still there may the Lord bless you tonight in the mighty name of Jesus now please hear me tomorrow I want to encourage everyone in as much as I, I hope I've obtained permission can I invite everyone to come sir because I want to share something that is very powerful you need to understand the spirit life listen carefully don't think it's just a leaders meeting just to come and teach administration and the rest there is something about the spirit life that if you do not understand in this end time you will not be able to stand are we together he said, those who walk not by the flesh, but by the spirit, you need to know how to, un you need to understand the dynamics of the spirit life. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it, See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Kata Branda Kateka Post. Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and the The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.